Very frequently, when you're being hired for the job, you might face an Excel assessment test. In this particular exercise, we're going to look at one of those tests. In this test, you're presented with the set of data in columns A through D, and we also present it with the set of questions in the columns F through H. As we answer each question, we would need to put our answers in the column H. This test is designed to be interactive. You can follow along by downloading this Excel sheet using link in the description of this video. Let's go ahead and get started. In the first question, we need to calculate total quantity of ordered items. Let's see how we can do it. Before jumping into calculations, let's understand what is the data that we have. We have a list of orders in the rows 2 through 12. And we also have for each order quantity of the items that have been ordered in the item itself. For example, the line 2 represents 5 ebooks being ordered. Line 3 represents 3 snacks being ordered, and etc. So, how can we calculate total quantity of ordered items? The best way to calculate total quantity is to use Excel function. We are going to use some function to do the calculation. I'm going to put my cursor into cell H2 and type the function. You start the function by typing equal sign and then typing the function name. I'm going to use some function. Some function adds all the values in the particular range. I'm going to open parentheses and select the range for which I'm trying to make calculations. My range is from A2 to A12. And as you can see, once I selected the range, Excel automatically added those values into the sum function. I'm going to close the parentheses and hit enter. And you see that Excel completed the calculations for us and calculated that there are 40 items that have been ordered. How did Excel do this calculation? Basically, for the range that we've selected, A2 through A12, Excel went and added all the numbers, 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 and etc., until it exhausted that to the end of the range. And the total number that Excel calculated equals to 40. Let's go ahead and answer question 2. In question 2, we need to calculate total number of orders. To calculate total number of orders, we also need to use Excel function. But it is going to be a different function. We're going to use the count function. To do the calculations, let's put our cursor into cell H3 and start typing. I'll start typing equal sign and then use the function name, which is count. And as you can see, count function counts the number of cells in the range that contains numbers. So what we're going to do we're going to open the parentheses and select the range. And it's going to be exactly the same range. What you have to realize, each row here in this range represents an order. So we know by selecting the range how many rows are going to be in the range. And using number of rows, Excel is going to calculate total number of orders for this particular question. Once I've selected the range, A2 through A12, I'm going to close the parentheses and hit enter. And you see that there are 11 orders in this range, and there are 11 orders that we see here in this particular spreadsheet. In the next question, we need to add a new column and look up price for each item in column C. Let's better understand what it means. We have column C, which is reserved for calculating the price and looking up the price for each item. Now, all the prices are located in the Prices tab. If we go to Prices tab, you see that the price for ebook is $5.95, for snack is $6.95, pencil $1.95, and etc. as we go down the list. Let's go back to orders and decide what are we going to do here. First, we need to add a title for this column, and we'll call it price. Once we have a title, we need to use a function in Excel to look up the price. The correct function to use is VLOOKUP function. So let's go ahead and start typing. Instead of typing the answer in the column H, as we did for questions 1 and 2. We're going to put the cursor into cell C2 and start typing equals VLOOKUP. And as you type, you see that Excel provides you help. So you can see what is the description, what does this function do? And you can see that VLOOKUP lookups value in the leftmost column of the table and then returns a value in the same row from the column you specify. So what we're going to do, we're going to open the parentheses and decide how we're going to look up the value. We already have the title of the item in the column B. 
So our first lookup for B3 is going to the item in B2, which is ebook. The next value for VLOOKUP, we need to supply the range. And for range, we need to navigate to the prices tab and select the range, which would be A2 through A6. The next value is the index column. There are two index columns, A and B, and they have numbers, 1 and 2. So because we're looking up the price and we're going to be returning the price from the column B, we need to specify value 2 because B is the second column. And the last value defines if this is an approximate match or an exact match. In our case, we need an exact match to match ebook here in the prices tab to ebook in the orders tab. So I'm going to select false for exact match. Once I close the parentheses and hit enter, you see that Excel looked up the correct price for ebook. You would think that by just extending the price, we will populate prices for all the items here, but that's not the case. Unfortunately, because Excel uses relative references, as we progress from B2, where price was calculated correctly, the range here was prices A2 through B6. But for example, for B3, the range is A3 to B7. And as we go down the list, the values in the lookup range increase. And by the row 7, you see that the range is A7 to B11. And if we go here to prices, A7 to B11 represents non-existent range. And this is why Excel cannot look up the values. So what we're going to do, we're going to use absolute reference to do the correct range. And absolute reference is identified by the dollar sign. So in front of the column and row, we need to put a dollar sign. So instead of A2, we're going to have dollar sign A and then dollar sign 2. And then we're going to do the same thing for B6. In front of the B, we're going to have a dollar sign. And in front of the 6, we're going to have dollar sign as well. Let's hit enter. And you see that the value didn't change. But now if we expand this updated formula across all the cells in the range, you see that the calculations were performed correctly. And as you can see, the absolute range was used in the first cell as well as in the all cells of the range. And the calculations for cup were performed correctly. Now we can go ahead and mark question 3 as complete. We're going to do it by putting the cursor into cell H4 and then highlighting the cell with the green color. Let's go to the next question. In the next question, we need to add new column and calculate order total in column D. To do this, let's name this column as total. And then let's perform the calculations. To calculate total, we need to multiply quantity, which is 5, for the row 2 by the price, which is 595. To do the calculations, let's use equal sign and multiply A2 by C2. And once I hit enter, you see that the total was calculated correctly as 29.75. What I can do now, I can expand this calculation across all the cells in the range in the column D. Now we can mark question 4 as complete. In the next question, we need to calculate how many pencils have been ordered. Because it's a single value that is going to be returned, we can perform these calculations in the cell H6. Before doing the calculations, let's better understand what is being asked. We basically need to do a conditional calculation. What does it mean? For every pencil order, which are represented by the rows 4, 7, and 11, because this line items and corresponding rows contain pencils as items, we need to identify these orders and we need to get the value from the column A and sum up all these values 2 for the row 4, 7 for the row 7, and 1 for the row 11, and add them up and include them into the calculations. The correct function for that is some if function. Some function just performs the pure sum calculations. Some if function allows us to do the condition. Let's look at the sum if function in more details. To do this, let's put our cursor into cell H6. Let's go into formulas tab and then let's click on insert function. I am going to type sum if and click go. And there are two functions, sum if and sum if s. Sum if allows you to use one condition. SUMIFS allows you to use multiple conditions and multiple criteria. We're going to use some if function because we only have one condition. And I'm going to click OK. There are three arguments that some if function takes. We have the range, then we have a criteria, and then we have a sum range from which we are going to get the values and do the calculations. As you might have guessed, our range for criteria would be column B, specifically the range B2 
through B12. Now our criteria is going to be equal pencil. We can type equal pencil or we could have just typed pencil and Excel would interpret the value correctly. And for the sum range, we need to identify where we're going to get the values. We're going to get the values from the column A, but specifically from the range A2 through A12. Let's recap. To make this formula work correctly for us, we're looking for all the orders that have pencils as part of the ordered items. And we're getting the values of how many pencils have been ordered in the column A. Let's click OK. And you see that there are a total of 10 pencils that have been ordered. Let's confirm these calculations. 2 plus 7 is 9 plus 1 equals 10. In the next question, question 6, we need to calculate how many pencils and pens have been ordered. To do this, we need to use very similar calculation as we did in the question 5. And in addition to pencils, calculate how many pens have been ordered. Let's go ahead and do it. First step is to use some if formula to calculate how many pencils have been ordered. As we know, to do this, we need to select the range for the criteria first, and we do it by selecting the range B2 through B12. Then we need to define the criteria itself. We will use pencil, and then we will define the range from which the values will be calculated. And this range is A2 through A12. In addition to pencils, though, we need to add number of pens that have been ordered. I'll put a plus sign and then use the same sum if formula. And for the range of sum if formula, I am going to select B2 through B12 for pen calculation. I am going to select pen. And for the sum range, I am going to use the range A2 through A12. Once I close the parentheses and hit enter, you see that there are 25 items have been ordered between pencils and pens. To answer question 7, we need to calculate how many orders contain three or more items. As you might have guessed, we will be using counterpart of some if, which is count if function. To do this, let's put cursor into the cell H8, and then let's type this formula by typing equal count if, and once we open the parentheses, we see two parameters that formula accepts. The first parameter is the range, and the second one is the criteria. For the range, we need to select the range where calculations will be performed and where criteria will be applied. In our criteria, we need to get orders that contain three or more items. So our range should include the quantity. And for the range, I'm going to select A2 through A12. The criteria value is tricky. The criteria says that we need to get orders that contain three or more items, which means that these are all the orders with more than two items. So for the criteria, I'm going to type quotes and then greater than two. Once I close the parentheses and hit enter, you see that there are seven orders that meet this criteria. Let's verify. So let's calculate all the orders that have more than two items. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which matches our calculated value. In question eight, we need to answer how many orders have quantity other than two. Basically, we will use the same function and we'll use very similar syntax, but our criteria is going to be not equal to 2. Let's put cursor into the cell H9 and start typing. We'll type equals count if, and then for the range, we will use the same range, A2 through A12, but for the criteria, we will use not equal, and it's basically less and then greater signs, and we will type not equal to. Once I close the parentheses and hit enter, you see that Excel calculated a total of eight orders that have quantity other than two. In question nine, we need to determine the total quantity of order items that start with the letter P. Because we're looking for total quantity, we need to use some if formula. So let's put the cursor into the cell H10 and start typing. I'm going to type some if, and for the range, I am going to select the range B2 to B12, because this is where the criteria is going to be applied. And our criteria is all the orders for which items start with the letter P. To enter this criteria, we need to use asterisk. 
I am going to open quotes, put letter P, and use asterisk. It means that we need to select all the orders that start with the letter P. And it doesn't matter how many characters are after letter P. And what are those characters? That what asterisk actually represents. For the sum range, I am going to select the range in the column A because this is where the quantity is going to be calculated. So I'm going to select A2 through A12. And once I hit enter, you see that there are 25 items for the orders for which items start with the letter P. For question 10, we need to calculate how many orders contain seven character items. Because the question asks on how many orders, we need to use count if formula. And for the criteria, we need to determine items that have seven characters because there are five characters in the item book. Snack is the same. Pencil is the six character item. Pen is the three character item. So let's go ahead and apply this formula to see if there are any items that have seven characters. I'll put the cursor into the cell H11 and start typing equal. And then we'll use count if formula. And once I open the parentheses, I need to select the range. And for the range, we will use B2 through B12. And after comma, I need to specify the criteria. So for the criteria, we will use question mark. Each question mark represents a separate character. For example, if I put six question marks, it will select all the items that have six characters. Once I close the parentheses and hit enter, you see that there are five six character items on the list of orders. What are those? Pencil, ticket, pencil, ticket, and pencil. Now, because we're being asked for seven character item, let's change it. And instead of six question marks, let's add one more and we'll have seven question marks. And once I hit enter, you see that there are no orders that contain seven character items. Please make sure to check the description for available downloads. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments of this video. If content was helpful, please click the like button and subscribe. All the best and I'll see you in my next video.